Come on. Good morning, Emmanuel. Can you give our praise and worship team a wonderful hand that came in? Did you guys, did you enjoy that today? Yeah. Y'all want them to come back and sing a little bit after me a little bit more? Or do y'all want me to sing? Yeah, I bet you do. It is good to be here on today. I want to thank um, the worship team from, uh, for coming. Um, um, first, um, my wife, Iris, give her a hand. She's here. and This is my man, KP, Kevin Jr. Say, hey, what's up, Kevin? Say hi. And brother Justin and sister Tanita. Uh, who else? My man, brother Terry. I want to thank them for um, traveling with us this morning um, out here um, to you. And we, we get the opportunity to come every year. And, and speaking has been very a blessing to me. Um, I, I tell you, uh, three or four years ago, uh, I didn't even know where really was. <laughs> I stayed for primarily in Fresno area and Clovis area. And, and when we decided to come here um, and um, bring our son, Darren Person Jr. Darren Person Jr. is in the house. Say what's up to him. Say hi to him. You already know him. I got one thing. I don't know where administration is, but before I start, just one thing. I love this school. I love everything about the school. One thing I would like to see change. Can I tell you what that is? Um, I went by your lunch room not the other day, and I saw this big old picture of this big head guy. And I'm thinking, you got to see that every day. Um, and it's my son, and his hair was wild and stuff. I said, this is an everyday thing. We got to switch that. Maybe you need to rotate somebody else in there a little bit every once in a while. But that's all right. I thank God for my son. And I thank God that we're here at Emmanuel. Come on, give yourself another hand. I might joke around a little bit today, but I'm really, really serious about something I want to share with you today. When I, our message for you today, and I want you to say this with me. Um, then I'm going to go into my message and I'm going to pray real quick. Then we're going to be out. Say this. Say trouble will not last always. One more time. Everybody says, hey, trouble will not last always. I'm coming from Psalms 34 and 19, and the scripture says, and many of you are familiar with the scripture, it says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But it says, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. How many of you have heard that scripture before? I'm going to talk about that a little bit today. Uh, on today. I, I struggled with bringing this particular sermon to you because as I thought about you as young people being in, I believe you are from 7th to 8th to 9th all the way up to 12th, obviously that was in this room. I began to think about you because when you think about struggles and when you think about afflictions, you don't, I don't necessarily think about you. I think about adults being afflicted. And me as an adult, I think about the, own, the other things that I go through, the trouble that I go through, like Paying bills. Any of y'all young people pay bills? Raise your hand. It's probably only bills. Probably your cell phone. You give a little bit uh, too, if that. I think about affliction of trying to raise a family. Through my life, I've experienced some, some sicknesses, and I've experienced some loss. And I begin to think about, well, adults have afflictions, but what about you as youth? And if many of you that know me, I work in various areas, and one of the areas I work with, I work with youth. I work with about 10,000 young people across Fresno um, every year. And my wife is also a, a, a therapist, and me and her um, do counseling together. So if I've dealt with a lot of young people, and what surprises me when I talk about trouble, are y'all listening to me today? Everybody with me? There was one guy that was sleeping last time. I'm looking for him. I'm calling if you see him, tap him. Um, but when I think about trouble and you, I look at the statistics. And this is stunning. Some of you might even know this. They say the leading cause of death from, and it was in 2005, for young people is suicide. Young people your age, and it has rapidly increased from 2001 all the way to 2005, where we're seeing that young people your age, because of trouble in their life, have decided to take their own, that's the leading cause. Not car accidents, not drug issues, self-inflicted suicide because they have own issues. Another bit when I think about young people, when I think about trouble, is I think about the increase in, in anxiety with young people. 
I can attest to that. And some of you that are standing in this room are also familiar with me there. Where we have a lot of young people that not only are anxious, but are dealing with anxiety that is dealing with stress. So it's without a doubt when I talk about this message, I'm okay talking about this message to you. Because some of you are still you are dealing with stuff. You don't have to wait till you get to my age to go through anything. Do I got an amen? Yeah, yeah, I like that. Y'all feeling good. Amen. Y'all can amen me every once in a while. I just don't go crazy about it, okay? But you go. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I heard Julia say amen. All right. But that means that you're going through something and that you're dealing with something. And one thing about it being young and being an adult one thing I've learned about you, when you go through stuff, young people, you don't always tell anybody. You go through stuff by yourself. And check this out. Some of you think that you're the only person going through it. And that's why we see people that get depressed and get anxious because they're like, man, I don't know that I'm doing this. I don't know these things are going on in my mind and my heart. I don't know I feel this way. And sometimes what happens with young people, you get isolated. And you try to deal with it all by yourself. And I've done it before. And it's not a good thing. And what's, a, what's wonderful about a great place like Emmanuel is, one, foremost in anything, when you're dealing with things, number one, you have God. But not only with God, God has put people around you, that people in the school, your peers that are around you, that can help you. Let, let me tell you something. This is even off a message. When you're going through stuff, don't do it by yourself. Don't think you're the only one. I was surprised when I was young people, when I started getting together with other young people, that there were other young people that was going through the same stuff that I was going through. I didn't even know it. And when you talk and encourage each other, you can help, you can help each other. Another point that I, I realized that you go through stuff, because I remember when I was young. I was young a few years ago. Y'all can laugh at that. Yeah, just a few years ago. Crossed over. 40, I can't believe I'm about 43 now. I met my beautiful wife, and I said beautiful because she's beautiful and fine and everything like that. When I ain't going to tell you the age that she was, but I met her in high school. And I don't, I'm not going to tell you what she was doing when I met her because she was in the altercation back in high school. And she was 15 years old. And... It, People, y'all don't think it because I'm a little bit older now. Y'all probably see me now. Y'all don't think that I have swag. But back then, I had a lot of swag. I had so, <laughs> I had so much swag that she came to me. You know you got game. <laughs> y'all, y'all think y'all got it here. But I'm just sitting on the just side. Ain't even paying anybody attention. And she bumped me and gave me a note. Back then, y'all give text, but back then, you just give me a note. Y'all want me to tell you what the note said? She said, can you be my friend? I said, let me see. You know, let me see what I'm going to do. But, yeah, we can hang out. I got a busy schedule, but I'll fit you in, you know. <laughs> That's why I love having a mic because you be talking all kind of stuff. But at home, I'll be dealing with some other stuff. She's going to let me know. But I thought about my own life when I was young, and, and I thought about the, the stress and stuff that I deal with when I was your age. And I know I don't have much time. And I've thought about my own afflictions. Many of you will know, but some of you might also be dealing with stuff. My father and mother got divorced at a very early age. My father um, had a particular issue. He had an issue with drugs. So he got what we call sprung out on crack cocaine at a very early age. So I didn't really see my father until I became an adult. But my father was in and out of prison most of his life. So my mother raised me. We didn't have very much money, but we, we – but we, survived by the help of God. Um, but I didn't always know, but it was at certain times in my life that I, I felt the stress and the pressure of life. Then if you raised where I was raised at an early age, I was offered, you know, to, to sell drugs. And I thought, I remember the first, I was like 15 years old when somebody first approached me about selling drugs. I'm like, I'm going to sell drugs when my father is sprung out on drugs. And sometimes when I would drive on the bus, it was funny then, but uh, I mean, it wasn't funny then, but now I can laugh. I would see my father on the side of the road with a buggy, and I was like, man, I don't even know that dude. Because, I, but, I, but, I, but I experienced afflictions. I experienced things in my life 
that, that if you see me now, you wouldn't know that I've been through there. And some of you, if you were, had an opportunity to grab this mic and tell your story, that you also have experienced many things in your life. But the one thing that happened to me that I was just, it happened just because I went to church for many years. My mother made me go to church. She didn't know that when she, because she worked, that me and my brother would sneak out the back before the preacher got up because I didn't want to hear the preacher talk about heaven or hell. And plus the Raiders were playing, so I was trying to get home and see the Raiders. Back then they had Marcus Allen. It was pretty good. But at 17, I received Christ in my life, in high school. And I remember coming back to school that day and telling my friends, I was like, hey, man, my brother, I saw my brother get up and receive Christ. So I went up that day, too. I never thought it was cool to serve Christ. Because there's a lot of people with their hands up in the air. I'm like, man, that's, that's not what I want to do. But at early age, I received Christ at 17. And I came back to school and told my buddies, I remember the next day I came on Monday, I said, hey, man, I, got, I received Christ. They said, what, D? I said, yeah, man, I received Christ. I want to change my life. The first thing they told me was a few things, and y'all probably know what they are. The first thing they told me, does that mean you're going to stop your ways? I said, what ways? I said, you're going you gonna to stop doing some of the things that you used to do? I said, I'm going to try. And one of my buddies told me this. He said, that means when you get, um, you're going to have to wait till you get, um, you ain't going to mess with any girls? I said, I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to ask God to help me. And they gave me a hard time because I wanted to rec receive the Lord, but I did. I told them that I would keep trying. But I want to disclose one thing to you, and this is my message, and I only got about five minutes, and I want to say this. One thing as a living for Christ, when I accepted Christ, I felt that if I got Christ in my life, I wouldn't have any more trouble. I felt I wouldn't have any more afflictions. I thought if I accepted Christ, that my father and mother would get back together. Never happened. I would pray over it many nights. I thought I wouldn't lose any friends. I lost friends. I thought that my grades would get better in school just by receiving Christ. Because I read about this preacher. This preacher said when he was taking a test, he just prayed, and all of a sudden he saw a vision of, of somebody writing the answers to the test on the chalkboard. I tried it. He never showed up for me. I'm serious. I prayed hard that night. I said, I ain't studied. So, God, you're going to have to do for me like you did for him. And I kept looking at the chalkboard. <laughs> I said, God, when are you going to show up? He showed up all right when I got home. And my mama said, you got that F. I thought when I received Christ that I wouldn't have any more temptation. I love my wife. We was met in high school, but it wasn't always easy. And I remember I would say things like, I said, I'm, 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 I'm saved now, so things are different. And I would look at Iris. Iris, I'm mess I would see her passing by. And somebody would tell me about her. You know how y'all looked at her. And they said, what about her? I said, she's a fine young lady. Y'all you know, don't want to laugh. And they said, what about her? I said, she's, she's a woman of the Lord. In the back of my mind, I was thinking, I said, man, she's really, she's. I still, received, I still was tempted. Do I got any people say amen? But Emmanuel, seriously, I think I'm here to tell you that you will still experience trouble. You will still experience afflictions. But I want you to know, know something. Just because you go through adversity, just because you go through trials and tribulations, just because you have bad times and hard times, it doesn't mean that God is not with you. Adversity is just an opportunity, opportunity for victory. Adversity is just an opportunity for God to show up on your behalf. I, I begin to look forward to some of the things that I went through in my life. And I remember this scripture. I'm going to say this scripture. And it says, it says, I might go through afflictions. I might go through things in my life. But God will deliver me out of them all. I want to encourage you today, no matter what it is, I want to encourage you to make, no matter what you go through from this day to the end, that whatever your afflictions are, God will deliver you. And even my son told me once say that just blessed my life. He didn't even know I was going through something at the time when he got back from a camp. And he told me, he said, Darren, he said, Dad, he said, if God be before you, who could be against you? And I began to think about that. If God is on your side, young people at Emmanuel, if he's with you, 
Don't matter what you face, if it's depression, don't matter what you face, if it's anxiety, don't matter what you face, if it's broken relationships, no matter what you face in school, that if God is for you, I want to encourage you today, who can be against you? And if God is on your side, no matter what it is, he didn't say some afflictions. He said all. He will deliver you out of every single one of the things that you go through. Let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I thank you for Emmanuel. I thank you for our students that are here today. I'm reminded of your scripture that tells us no matter what we go through, that God, that you would deliver us out of everything. I'm reminded of the word of the God that says that no weapon formed against us will prosper. And it doesn't matter, Father, what weapon that comes our way from the enemy. It won't prosper over their lives. I rebuke those things that, that come against them, that, come, that comes to sift them, that comes to destroy them. God, you have not come to give us fear, but you have come to give us power. You have come to give us love. You've come to give us a sound mind. Amen. Can we all say amen? Thank you, man. You are so good to be here with you again.